Yeah, lives or you could. Uh, anyway, we're live right now. Hey, what's up, guys? But uh, you could also on. You were trying to record on the laptop, right? Yeah. Uh, if on the on the Google thing, there should be something you can use as a screen recorder. So you could actually. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, it's oh, called yeah. it's called Story Express Screen Recorder, the blue square thing. Yeah. So yeah, you're able to uh co- record your screen. I haven't tested it out yet. A- anyway. Yep. So yeah, now we're yeah, live. Still- yeah, right. Wait, 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 talk about that till we end. After we end, what we're doing. Yeah. But yeah, I'm still surprised when you told me about the last live. Think about the Disney, the Disney. Oh, right, right, about how freaking Walt Disney ripped off some studio. Yeah, well, not one, a lot. You say a lot. Yeah, well, yeah, like taking actual stories and making them innocent and friendly when in real life they're dark, Eric and murders. <laughs> They not know they were murdered. Yeah, they do seem dark, but oh straight up, that is very dark. All of them is dark. It is what it is, you know. Yeah, but yeah, I don't agree with what they did. It's still fucked up. But well, I think they still take it, so I don't. They didn't get any. I don't think they didn't get any problem. Probably they got sued, but nah, I doubt it. Yeah, I doubt it. If they didn't, they, they're lucky, they stole, and they got away with it, so. Not really. They were kind of called out. Oh, yeah, true. Like, when they called, got caught out. I, I never... I don't yeah, they got called out by a YouTuber called Game Theorist. This, they literally... So, the Game Theorist was doing a bending the ink machine thing. I could play the video on my, uh, on the laptop, too. Show everyone. Yeah, sure. All right. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay. Uh, let me share my screen. Yeah. I heard myself. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Yeah. All right. Just ignore that. I was just doing something for reality. I'm seeing it. I just can't hear because you know. Yeah, the echo. Nope. Oh, you could. I could mute myself on the phone and then you can. Um... Oh, you can just send me the video. You can just send me the video. And I'll watch it on my own. Yeah, this one right here. Okay, I'll send it to you, but just to show yeah. everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, okay, so yeah, this is the video where er, that MatPat be calling out Walt Disney. Not Genshin Impact. Yeah, and then it seemed like I'm so surprised. I've been doing it for a while. Why is it? I will now have the naked truth. Yeah, it's uh, Game Theory. Hello, Internet. I didn't. Welcome to Game I... Theory. You heard of the talkies? Well, this show pioneered the talkie too muchies. And today we're flashing back to a simpler time the time before video games and YouTube. Before Marvel and Star Wars, a time before, <laughs> dare I say it, fidget spinners. Dun, dun, dun. Today we're flashing back to the years between 1920 and 19. Yo, do you remember freaking fidget spinners? I used to have one, yes. Yeah, I was the, in Puerto Rico, that was the shit. I used to use that as a kid. Yeah, I had like three. <laughs> Damn, they, they were. They were. 
I mean, I know they were that old. Puerto Rico, they blew up a little bit more. We, we copy Americans, so... I mean, not like there's, like, too much to do in Puerto Rico. True. I need to have those speed printers. I need to bring it to school. I need to look cool doing that shit. Anyways. Oh wait, I guess you, you can hear it from the phone. Yeah, I can hear it. But hey, look on the bright side. At least there was no such thing as FNAF. In such dark <laughs> the world was <laughs> no such thing as FNAF. They needed a reason to laugh, and thus animation exploded Hi, the scene. I mean, sure, animation had been around since 1900, and if you really want to get technical, could date back as far as the invention of the thaumatrope from 1825, but it was this era, the 1920s to the 1940s, when history entered what's known as the golden age of animation, and it's this world where we find ourselves in... This is... This is very, uh, relevant to what we were talking about. Golden age of animation, basically animation studios and such... So keep that in mind, and all this started during the age of animation. Now that everyone got the, the gist of it. And for today's theory, the world of Bendy and the Ink Machine. Now, if you haven't been watching a lot of Let's Plays lately, this one might have slipped past you. It's a small indie title told in five parts, because at this point it's always five parts. With the first yeah, why, available, because why the wouldn't there be five shortly. chapters? There isn't a whole lot to do in every chapter, but what it lacks in gameplay... Okay, uh, I'm just going to pause it for a second and say my opinion of Ben and the, the Ink Machine. It's very interesting. Like... I, I heard of, I, I did saw Jack play two of the I think of the second the, game I think. The second chapter? The it, second chapter. I didn't watch the first chapter because I felt lazy. I was like, I'm not gonna watch the first chapter. The first chapter first nothing one. too much goes on. So you you uh, you didn't miss yeah. too much. Okay. Well, a bit of lore, a bit of uh yeah. craziness, I, I but watched, no, it's just uh, so pretty much some like fetch stuff to get the ink machine working and blah blah blah. That's mostly it. Do you like it? It's interesting. I if I were to play it, I'd be a scary bitch baby. <laughs> uh, well, what I think about it, the time I watched it was entertaining. It was entertaining. Maybe because you got a pro gamer like Jack playing it, so that's just the guy who people don't know. How would you people know. not know? The people in the ladies. My name is Jack Well, if people don't watch gamers, then, you know, they'll probably Okay, yeah, yeah the people who don't, don't watch gamers, which I don't understand why there'll be any in my yeah. channel, because I do yeah, some so. games here, so. Yeah. I need to go rewatch that. The Jack, the Jack. I don't know. I think Jack's a pro gamer. The way he he do it, he give his opinions. I think Jack is. Oh yeah, and then he, oh yeah, and I think in the third chapter they actually had Jack do vo a voice line. Hey. Oh yeah, they did. They did. Yeah. So Jack is technically in the game. You have to find figure out where it is though. Bendy makes up for its Hi, Bendy. Story, putting you into okay, fun fact. A couple of days ago, actually, I wa I watched a comic about Bendy in the Ink Machine called Bendy and the Quest for the Ink Machine or something. So far, are, are, so as far as I watched it, it's pretty, it's funny, it's cute. Uh... They they make fun of Benny's height a lot, calling him a ki a kid or a little brother. <laughs> That's that that remind yeah, call back to uh I don't remember what his name, but to those people who watched uh Full Metal Al Alchemist, you know what I'm talking about. Ray doesn't. He doesn't watch anime. Yeah. No, I don't. 
No, I don't want it. I don't want Shannon. Only, I'm, is, is just, only one who will watch it would be Babe Ridd. Yeah. Or uh, the other one I told you is that there was an anime I watched, the, the cruise. I went on cruise. I oh, yeah, watched. that space anime, whatever it was called. Yeah. Yeah, whatever it was called. Dude, it was mm, the story, the character work. It, it, it didn't feel like an anime. It just felt like a cartoon. It felt like. It felt like a cartoon that I will watch as a kid. Yeah. Damn, I wish I knew that name. Oh. Anyways. Yeah. Back to this. How Bendy exposes Disney. Oh, yeah, here's the title Game Theory. How Bendy exposes Disney's cartoon conspiracy. Get exposed by a game. <laughs> Tired cartoonist invited to come back to his old studio after 30 years. Uh, I'm going to read this. It's just for the fun of it. Dear Henry, it seems like a lifetime since we worked on cartoons together. 30 years really slips away, doesn't it? 30 years since all that. Sorry, find that's a fake callback. If you're back in town, come visit the old workshop. There's something I need to show you. Your best pal, Joey Drew. Mm. Well. It comes from a man named Joey Drew, your former boss at the company, Joey Drew. That Studios. face. Inside, you find that yeah. everything. But then, you know, I can, I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, that's because the live stream is like a. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sounds, it, yeah it's delayed. It's more delayed than. The oh, actual okay. thing. That's why you're. It's more yeah. out of sync. I don't want you. You watched the video, right? You watch yeah, I watched video, right? it. So you, you can tell me what he's saying. Tell me the, the key factor. So I never watched the, video, the game. You learned yeah. that Joey was experimenting with ways. Hey, call back to uh, Disney game. I forgot what it was called. Oh, hi, the Bendy. Signature character, a little devil named Bendy, is now alive and. Very, Hello. Very dangerous. You also learned that some employees, like Sammy Lawrence, Hi, Sammy. Department director, Sammy, why do you gotta be so ugly looking? Oh, hi, Kafuru. Kafuru Mickey. Must honor I must have him notice me. Notice me, Senpai. <laughs> it's just a friggin' yonder. Just notice me, Senpai. I will sacrifice this human to you. But yeah, Sammy Lawrence. God damn. Crazy motherfucker. To us, my little sheep. I'm not a sheep, you little oh, 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 bitch. Besides Bendy, I'm trying to not fight you. <laughs> Hi, Boris. Angel, who looks like she'll be playing a bigger part in Chapter 3. And honestly, I gotta say, Boris is my favorite character. Is your favorite character? Yeah, Boris is the best, best boy. <laughs> I kind of forgot. I need to go rewatch the Jack Tin and watch it again. I just remembered this. This video was made when only chapter one and two was out. Oh really? Yeah. So this is an old video. Wait, is the only video he exposed this me? I think there may be more, but this is the one that I remember. Well. I don't know, but I did not know that. I thought Disney was a little bit more nicer than that. I knew there wasn't that family friendly. I knew there was a dark side in Disney. I wasn't that dumb. But, but you didn't realize so, you didn't realize how deep the rabbit hole goes. Yeah. Just like in Alice in Wonderland, not everything is as it seems. Hey, true. <laughs> everyone, what's Peter Pan? What's Peter Pan, everyone? You get those references. Peter Pan, don't... that's what they call me. I promise you'll never be Please, alone. That's about it for now. Anyways. Now, many of you have been asking me on Twitter, at MattPatGT, as well as during GT Live, to do a theory about the game Twitter. and try and predict what's going on. But after doing the research, I think I can tell you one better. Instead of just trying to put together a rough plot summary, I think yeah. I can reveal the true identity of the main character of the game. Yeah, who's that guy? The, the guy with the face. Which one? 
those people and he keeps showing Uh, they're just random people. Oh, okay, okay. Mind animator of they have nothing to do. Bringing his creations to life. Because here's the I, thing. I hi, Boris. I feel bad for you. The events happening in the world wait, wait, why are you so actually mirror why are you events so that occurred at one of the top animation I don't know. All right, Betty Boop. Joey Drew in game is playing the role of perhaps the single most important pioneer of animated entertainment. A man whose name has sadly been almost completely forgotten by history. So, oh, Damn. That's Betty Boop, yeah. I haven't seen. The reason I know, yeah. the reason I know about that is because of my mom. A man by the name of Max. I don't know about her because the Disney only promote her. Okay, her, this. Her. Okay, this is a guy just me ripped off. Max Fleischer. Nice name, Max. What's your name, Max? Fleischer. Slicer. Okay. S did you just say Slicer? Oh, wait, wait, Slicer or Slicer? L look at the last name. F L E I S C H E R. Here, I'll rewind this so you can hear it. By history, a man by the name of Max Fleischer. Now, seeing Bendy and Boris, you White, 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 Fleischer. Max F. Max F. Yeah, I know the name Max. That's a, that's kind of easy name. Hello. Hello, Walt Disney. That's an ugly Mickey Why? Mouse. And that's an ugly goofy right there. Mickey Mouse cartoons. I mean, we're all trained to think that Walt Disney was the pioneer of this style of animation. That wow, he's the wow. He, he actually had toys about Disney. Mickey and Goofy, wow. That's but did, did you hear what he, what he just said? We're trained oh. to think he's the... Uh, let me rewind. We immediately think of Walt Disney he, and the old he, Mickey Mouse. We're trained to be and pretend he was the guy? Yeah, listen. I mean, we're all trained to think that Walt Disney was the pioneer of this style of animation. That he's the guy who made cartoons into what they are today. But that's because he purposely planted those thoughts into your head. And that's not an exaggeration. If you read about Walt Disney, you start to learn that he was a master of marketing himself. Taking credit for things that weren't his idea to begin with, then using the media... Do you see that? Yeah, it wasn't his ideas. And uh, Snow White to the actual... Snow White story. That yeah, okay, I see that. Media to sell his story to listeners who didn't know any better. Yeah, no, that's good. This guy had five of beer. Responsible for helping to shape the early world of animation, it was Max Fleischer with his brother Dave Fleischer working for their animation studio in New York. The Fleischer Studios. That's the name of their company before Disney ran it to the ground. Just, just what they're doing now with Blue Skies. Blue Skies was a company and Disney decided to destroy it. Decided to take everything they had, like Ice Age, yep. and Rio. What, what else? Oh, and the one where there's a, there was a movie that, you know, John Cena was playing, the, the bull one. He had a bull, a bull movie. Uh, with John Cena and, uh, and they, still, they, they took that too. Not surprising. I'm not surprised to destroy it. They, they're doing it with blue sky. They burn it to the ground. Yep. And they piss on it. That's what they did. <laughs> oh, Disney, you guys are a bastard. You guys are dark in the head. You guys, so Disney's dark in the head. <laughs> this was back in 2017. Yeah. So <laughs> now we know. Be careful. So six years ago, this was made. I'm surprised. Still in YouTube, you know, you know, Disney likes to block videos, get rid of videos. I'm surprised this video is still alive. Hmm. Oh. Yeah. Well, they. Well, but you know, my opinion about it is, you know, they they. they I got. He, I didn't know who the creator was of Disney. All oh, the Disney ten. I did not know who the creator was. 
the, 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 the guy we died was the creator. I did not know because I'm not into Disney logic or find out who was the you know creator of the stuff. Yo, did you put a like on the video? Oh yeah, uh, I did. Okay. The second life, I, I did. I didn't do the second life. I didn't do. What do you mean? There's only one. No, it's two. I see two. Two people? No, that's me. Oh no, no. But yeah, I give you that like. Okay. Anyway. Way back in 1914, when Walt was still only a teenager, Max Fleischer invented rotoscoping, a technique that allowed an artist to trace over live-action footage to create more realistic-looking animated movements. This was a huge advancement, allowing cartoons to be drawn faster and with a higher quality of movements. It also gave rise to the first of the major Fleischer Brothers series known as Out of the Inkwell, in which live-action footage of Max was combined with his animated characters as they literally came to life off the page to interact interact with and explore the real world. But the Fleischers didn't... Oh, I didn't realize that was his actual self. ...synchronized sound and music was, and they'll usually say Steamboat Willie, Mickey Mouse's monumental debut from back in 1928. But it was Max, not Walt Disney, who was the first to combine sound and animation in his series of shorts there we go. and song cartoons back in 1924, four years earlier than Steamboat Willie. These were those famous follow the bouncing ball sing-alongs that you've probably seen or heard of. Well, you have Max Fleischer to thank for those. But according to rumors, when Steamboat Willie launched, Walt Disney, despite being four years late to the party, actively tried to discourage reporters from mentioning these past sound videos in their articles, thus allowing Disney to claim all the credit for being the first See what I mean? Wow, they... So they just stole it and, you know... And lied. And lied. And, yep. Literally... Acted like those things... Those... Those, uh... Videos were just a hallucination. Okay, no, that's just dumb. You, you, you're making your... your People think they're just dumb. Yeah. That's that, that, that kind of dumb. That, that is super dumb. You can see the depth of his the depth of his greed. Indeed, that is what he, he, well, he wanted to be famous. The depth of being famous. By the way, that, 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 by the way, uh, sorry for ruining any childhoods, but hey, better know the truth than be ignorant. Look, I. Look, I, it's still not going to change my opinion. It's still not going to change my opinion what I think of the movie. Yeah. I actually will think this. I, I, I will. Now I, I have a different opinion about this. Yeah, like. Like, okay. Yeah, I see what you mean. Like, okay. Yes, Disney. Walt Disney himself. A bass. There. But. In the movies, they're still good. Even if he's yeah, they, a bass. Yeah, and. and no matter if they're copying, they knew how to make them into their own commercially. And besides, they were hits. Some of the quotes, well, not all of them. Not all of them. I'm not, I'm not biased. Some bit bad. Well, some bit bad. It's hard to But everything else, you know, I don't have to be surprised. I'm not be surprised, but. Hey, it's just opening your eyes, you know. Yeah. You know. Like, yes, yeah. ignorant is bliss, but it's better to be aware of what's going on. It's better to find out who was, who was the original creator, real creator. Yeah. Not just people who just steal ideas and pretend, hey, it's just an illusion. I'm to uh, stop you. Like, I know, this hap- I know this all happened in the 1930s, but... I mean, it's... Still, like, really. Yeah. If this happened now, they will not get away with it. But it happened in those times. I don't think any. I don't think people cared. I don't think people even cared. Or even knew. Or even knew. They just did it quietly and they got away with it. But, anyways to use these techniques and thus began the animation feud with the 
Disney's on the West Coast in Hollywoodland, going up against Max and his brother back east in New York. An animation feud that would last New York versus Hollywood. Decades. At their prime, the Fleischer Studio would be a premier producer of animated cartoons for theaters, with Walt Disney Productions being their chief competition. And yet, as I'm sure you can guess, it was the Disney who came out on top. Their marketing smarts and location in California amongst the growing movie industry ultimately buried Fleischer's business and erased his name from the annals of animation. History. Rest in peace, what Max Fleischer. What does have to do with an incomplete indie game hit? Well, first, think about what you just heard. Even with animation in its infancy, Max Fleischer's work with Out of the Inkwell was literally bringing animated characters into the real world. Just oh, like wait. Joey Drew and oh, Machine, shit. A man who literally wrote a book on bringing images to life, as we see in Chapter 1. One's the illusion of living. It's also the illusion of living. Studio has fallen to. That's that's funny. The illusion of living. Ooh. The art of bringing drawings to life. No, that'd actually be quite terrifying to do. To ruin by the time you're and the reason why I say it's terrifying to do is because depending on what a person draws, it could literally be a hell to break loose. It will be. Unless its weakness is like water. Then it's like, okay, never mind. Just spray the fucker. And your character visits it. A yeah. detail that reflects Max Fleischer's eventual bank. Or pretend like this. Pretend like this. Pretend it's just always the same. A nightmare. Well, why we have to face your worst fear? Like, you know, something you don't like. Like, that's something you don't like. Like, you, I know you don't like wrestling, so it kind of like they tie you, you get tied up in watching every wrestling match. And if they try to force my eyes open, I could just headbutt them. No, that's what tie you up. That's why I said headbutt, not punch. Oh, but you still have, you're still tied up, so they just, you, you can close your eyes, but. They're gonna play the video anyway. Yeah, if they try to force my eyes open with their hands, boom! Get the fuck away from me. Ain't gonna you force my eyes open. I'll fight ya. But if you freaking corner a badger, it'll fight back. Ultimately losing his business to Walt Disney, the man who stole the credit from him. At this point, I don't get what Joey's plan is for this company. Think about it. Yeah. If this game was truly meant to parallel Walt Disney animation, then why would it happen in an abandoned studio? And why would the characters be out for revenge? Hello. Disney won everything. Disney runs the world. Max Fleischer was the one who was left with a crumbling business and a name lost to obscurity. So if there's anyone out there who would have a chip on their shoulder and be out for revenge, like you see Joey Drew and Bendy boy. the Ink Machine, well, it would be him. But we're not even to the good stuff yet. One look at Bendy's design, and I'm sure you immediately think of Mickey Mouse, right? Not so really. Mischievous character with big white gloves. Well, Max Fleischer had his version of the kick. Wait, hold up. Mickey Mouse isn't mischievous. But as you heard, Max has his own interpretation of the of his, the character, and introducing the character to Bimbo, a tubby black Bimbo the dog. So here we are. Uh, my Mine is slow, so you, 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 um, oh my, what the? That's Bimbo the dog. Okay, yeah, they copied, they, they definitely took that, that from them. That look exactly like Mickey. Remember, F Max Fleischer did this a lot longer than, than Walt Disney. That's why I said, Disney copied them. Wow, you look like, you look exactly like Mickey. And, yeah, uh, that, you know how Disney has, uh, rights of Betty Boop? Yeah. She, that plays a, pl that plays a part in this. So, uh. So, wait, what happened, what happened, wait, what happened to the company? Disney bought them out? Uh, I think they out, Disney outperformed, 
and the Flexure Studio, which made them out of business. Well, and, and they bought their company? I don't know. I'm not sure about... Uh, probably they did, you know, to get the rights. To get a little bit more of the rights. Yeah, probably. Anyways. Yeah, so, yeah. Black and white cartoon dog complete with big white hands. One of the five main recurring characters that his studio would produce. Wait, Superman was Ma Max Fleischer's? I didn't know that. I knew Betty Boop was Max Fleischer's. I guess I didn't realize Popeyes was it as well. I don't know who the clown is. And I didn't... Hey, yeah! In Spanish, you come for baby. What, the clown? No, the, the, the man, the man, you man. Where the fish? Oh, Popeyes? Yeah. Oh, that's what you call it English. Did you call, you know, in Spanish, Popeye, you know. Isn't it? In English, Popeyes is a sailor, man. Yeah, I used to like to eat the spinach and punch the, the fat guy. Yeah. Oh, my God, I used to watch that. That was well funny. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was funny. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, that was yeah, I know. I did not even know Disney had that. I thought it was just normal show. Anyways. They're run. A character whose personality is a much more direct parallel to Bendy than Mickey's is. Mickey, in his early cartoons, tends to be the good guy. The one who's having to punch back against bullies. But Bimbo is actively a troublemaker. So much so that one of his most infamous appearances... Did she get beat up by a chicken? ...sinners is entirely... Dude got beat up by a chicken. Swing you sinners. About undead spirits punishing him for his misdeeds. Chicken, you use the steel. I don't see a ball. Oh, there goes your pants. Chasing women and pulling pranks. By the way, a uh, fun fact. Bimbo was Betty Boop's original love interest? Wait, Bimbo? Bimbo and Betty Boop had a love thing. Oh. Probably for me, uh, yeah. I know that. I thought that that woman, and, you know. But I did not know. You don't seem... You don't seem like to realize that uh, Betty Boop, human, bimbo, a dog. Oh, okay, okay. I, I, I see it now. I see it now. The thing is, Betty Boop was not originally supposed to be a human. She to be a dog. She was supposed to be a poodle. Um, not, um, I, I, I'll be honest, I'm not... I'm not surprised. Every, every love actor has to be, you know, a different dog. Yeah. I don't know how it went from being a poodle to a human. But... I've been to change plans. I've been to change plans. That or freaking Disney fucked up. Or they did. Anyway. Or, or, or they decided to be weird. Freaking weird beast, Sally. <laughs> Anyways. Bimbo's behavior just seems to be the stronger match for what you'd expect from a little devil like Bendy. Yeah. The parallels aren't just with Bimbo. There's also a direct... Yep. Here we are. Add Genshin Impact. Your assistance. Oh, God. Okay, yeah, Genshin Impact, fun game, blah, blah, assistant. blah. Direct relation between Max's... Yeah real-life characters, and Bendy's girlfriend, Alice what? Angel. Now, admittedly, we don't know too much about Alice. She was just introduced in Chapter 2 through one poster and one audio log. But what we do know is that she appears to be a female devil creature like Bendy, who somehow became an angel, like a Looney Tunes-esque Lucifer who happens to sing. We also know that she's drawn to be beautiful. <laughs> I am a demon, but I like to sing. I am Lucifer by Electro Shing. Da, da, da. 
That's just hilarious. A hilarious thought. He's picturing the devil himself. Be like, hello, mortal. Time for your punishment. Me singing. <laughs> like, what the fuck? You're not really giving your um, opinions. Oh, oh, sorry. 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 Yeah, it, it seems weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just listening. I think the one, who, who I want to say, it's just weird. Okay. Not only does she just physically look pretty, but she's also wearing a tight black holter top dress. Oh, yeah. I forgot. So, that type of outfit back then is the is like the equivalent of what guys think is sexy in those times yes not anymore not anymore not anymore something that back during this era of animation would have been seen as sexy and Scandalous. See? We also know via the audio logs that Sammy Lawrence expects her to surpass Bendy's yeah, popularity. I'm not, 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 i am yeah, my love interest, it so is like about way more popular and was considered to be an attractive, sexy character back in the day. Did that matter? Took it, took it. Design had to be toned down in 1934 when the government started cracking down on the sexual content in films. Oh, yeah, and she also happens to wear black ultra top dresses. Well, eventually red, but you know, this is black and white cartoon. And if you're wondering how a human woman would become the love interest of a cartoon dog, well, get this Betty Boop actually started as a. That is freaking what in the world? Yeah, her and a dog. No, I'm just more. I don't, the animation is disturbing. It yeah, was disturbing. I'm glad we didn't grow up in this era. Ugh. A yeah. dog, a French poodle, in fact. It's oh, kind of disturbing, oh. really. Her long dog oh, ears oh. became her long poop earrings. It's kind of gross. Oh uh, yeah, her long, long dog years became a freaking earrings. Anyway, she's also the matching species of her love interest, just like the ink machine's two little devils. But it's stylistically where we see the most. I keep forgetting that. Uh, uh, Benny Devil. Against Disney, two styles of animation developed. Disney's West Coast style was much more family friendly, with characters behaving much more realistically. And it's I'm not be surprised you're married to the damn devil. Oh uh, yeah, frick in Disney side, family friendly. Fletcher side, much darker. Yeah, dark. I, I can see what you, I can see what the other company wanted to. They, they I think they, I know what they wanted to do. They made it still. I can see you know. I can see why Disney wants to be more commercial. I understand it, but taking some dark image and making it to commercial thing. It's not cool. It's not cool. Yeah. It's not cool. Settings that happen to be brighter cool. and cheerier. The New York style, Max's work, is much grittier, twisted, aimed at more mature audiences with character bodies contorting like rubber bands. It was a looser animation style that felt like improv, where characters aren't so tightly bound to the rules of reality. <laughs> it's a lot like the YouTube animations that you see from channels like Gonzo SSM, Psychic Pebbles, ONG, and of course, Ego Raptor. The settings were grungier, taking place in cities and sewers, inside these, buildings these, rather these than outdoors. The topics dealt when I'm watching a nightmare in my dreams. By the way, some of the things Matt Pat just showed, those were actual YouTubers. Okay. Yeah, some YouTubers go to that link. Well, I know YouTube were kind of in a crisis, so back then, but I didn't know that crisis. Right. Anyway, just like Betty Boop. Did the electricity just stab him in the ass? What the hell? Mine is slow, so I'm. Mine is slow to see. The ghost got freaking zapped in the asshole by.
freaking electricity, what the heck? Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. A character made to be a sex symbol that has literally persisted across generations. In short, these were scarier cartoons with darker, sometimes even hellish imagery. And this is yeah, the aesthetic that they did in the game. Joe's animation studio was a tight, fine space filled yeah. with industrial pipes and dripping ink, dark and shadowy. It's literally a hell. Well, depending on our and state of mind. Jump scares, what's creepiest in the game right now is the cult. No, the big reveal that ends chapter scared, 2 is that Sammy is I trying to sacrifice you to their scared. ink god, Bendy. He's clearly in a cult worshipping these living, breathing cartoon characters. But in this case, truth is actually stranger than fiction because there's an unexplained recurring theme of cult activity throughout the Fleischer Studio roster. In Betty Boop is my palm red, we see Bimbo and Coco the Clown worshiping. Oh, that's character. his name, Coco. Oh, so why the flip they were shipping this thing? Yeah, it seems it wrong. You two need help. Shadowy witch figure. A shadow, mind you, that never gets referenced or explained. It's not a joke in any way. They're just there, bowing to it, and presumably it gives Bimbo his fortune telling powers. Then there's Betty Boop, Red Hot Mama, where a fireplace suddenly, for literally no reason, transforms into the literal mouth of hell. Also, let me uh, yes. It is that that, yes, uh, of course. What? Why wouldn't a fireplace be, turn into the gates of Frickin' hell. Not surprised. Yes, that sounds... No, that's normal. Yeah, no. Th that happened to me every day. My washing machine always becomes the gate of the underworld. Every Betty Boo cartoon requires a scene world. that shows her with some sort of strong backlight so you can see her legs through the dress. I mean, yeah, damn it. Come on, guys. Find a magazine or something. <laughs> oh, my I God. But perhaps the single most disturbing. Uh, so, yes, I'm gonna make it be creepy. Uh, I've seen some. Hey, Red, I've seen some. I've seen some cartoons that they, they wanted to make a, a horror movie into a cartoon. I'm not surprised. I saw it, I'm like, if I would have known this and watched this as a kid, I would have had nightmares. I would have never leave my house as a kid. Yeah. Disturbing, bizarre, inexplicable example of this is in the cartoon Bimbo's Initiation, where a lovable Bimbo's Bimbo Initiation, is okay. By Mickey Mouse, Max clearly showing his Damn it, Mickey! Mickey Mouse, what is wrong with you? Why would you lock Bimbo into the sewers? Not surprised, not surprised. Just surprised, Disney. That, that was kind of Disney did with the whole company. Pretty much. When all of a sudden he's confronted with a bunch of cultists. No joke, actual cultists asking him. Want to be a member? Want to be a member? No. When Bimbo refuses, he's suddenly tortured with all sorts of horrific punishments, including a knife cutting through a skin. Oh, good. They're freaking him torturing him. him. Want to be a member? Over and over again, he's asked to join until he's finally had enough punishment this? and says yes. At which point, it's revealed that the this, cult. This, this yeah. I think it showed. I think it showed. I have watched it years ago. Years ago, it showed on TV once. Want to be a member? Want to be a member? I'm, that's the only thing I remember. Want to be a member? Want to be a member? He refused. It started hitting him. This isn't hitting him. This is. They straight up tortured the guy. Well, people talked about that. People said they got scarred by this. I mean, it it's a darker cartoon, so I'm not surprised. Alt is made up. And then this part. Up entirely of Betty Boops. What the. What? What? So are you saying Betty Boop created a bunch of clones? That there's a cult that worships herself? Or maybe you're saying that when a stranger asks you to join a cult, you should absolutely say yes because there's going to be a hot girl in it for you. <laughs> Regardless, it's weird. <laughs> never join a cult, guys. Just... No. Uh, yeah, I'm never, I'm never doing that. No matter, if, not even if you, there's a hot chick for you. That's just... No. I know you're gonna. I'm not. I saw that. I know you want. I know you want to have a moment. 
<laughs> it's creepy and I have no idea how people back in the early 30s found it funny, but I think this scene gives us a really strong wait, wait, wait. People found it funny? This is not funny. This is weird. I mean, back then they didn't have too much for entertainment, so... 